We have some important things to discuss with Lauren Stroll here today. Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of the F123 Driver Career Mode. Fresh off of four consecutive engine failures in Sprint Race and Grand Prix combos. We were headed into the Mexico Grand Prix weekend with an important chat with Lawrence. I heard your radio comment in Cota and obviously don't want you leaving this team. You will be a leader when Fernando hangs up the helmet at the year's end. Tell me what it will take to keep you here for next year. I say uh, talk with Honda and, and get the partnership moved up to the start of next year. I can do that. Let's chat next week and I guarantee I will get that done for you. You hear the brief chat with Lawrence, basically him asking what's it going to take to keep me here on the team. And I said, let's get this Honda, you know, engines partnership moved up from, of course, 2026 or whatever it's supposed to be till now next year as I go for a bit of a, a spin here now. Uh, but that's what I want because obviously our engines suck right now, at least for me. Alonso's only had one mechanical failure this season. Uh, so we'll see if that happens. We'll find out in the next episode. A lot of things have been changing. Of course, we got the Connor Sport team coming in, uh, which I'm hearing rumors they might be bringing on a Formula One legend, actually, uh, to be a partner with that program for next season. Um, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see you there. And of course, we already know BMW coming in to take over Sauber next season. And that should be the only couple changes, but we'll wait and see uh, if anything else is happening. We come into qualifying Saturday. Obviously, the main goal for me this week Again, is just finish the Grand Prix. Can we make it to the end of a Grand Prix without the engine blowing up? That's the hope. If we can do that, honestly, I'll consider it a success. I'm not even looking at the victory this weekend. I just want to finish the race. Underway here in Q1. Uh, however, we're going to cross the stripe in Q1, and it's actually, it was top of the board. It would end up P3 behind our teammate of Alonso, and it would be Stroll, Sonoda, Sargent, DeVries, and Zhou Guan Yu uh, all out in Q1. Q2, bit of a rocky one. I invalidated my lap time. We would improve, though, right at the end go back into the top 10 but Lewis Hamilton big shock here Lewis Hamilton misses Q3 he will start the Grand Prix from 14th and Perez misses Q3 as well in P11 so a bit of a surprise there so Hamilton has some work to do this is going to be Fernando Alonso's biggest opportunity here to get himself right back into this championship fight with just a few Grand Prix remaining in his final season of Formula One competition he wants to go out of course the three-time world champ while, ha while Hamilton tries to break the record of seven and become an eight-time world champ Russell's still in the mix as well going for his first world title he has a chance to make up that uh, ground that he lost last episode from the engine failure in Coda as well uh, with Hamilton starting so far down the order here in Q3, uh, Q3 though my lap for whatever reason uh, felt pretty good we entered the final sector over a tenth of a second faster than sixth place of Oscar Piastri so I was feeling pretty good we go through the last right hander here hard on the gas coming to the line but to my surprise it wasn't going to be good enough it would go originally he won but would drop down all the way to P6, Alonso down to fourth, and I tried to go faster, and I basically ran an identical lap time that obviously got us nowhere. So we will start Mexico Grand Prix here from P6, Alonso fourth, Norris, who got his first win in Formula One in the last episode of Coda, starts on pole. Let's get ready to go to the grid on Sunday. Back in the 60s, Mexico City would host the season-ending race, a party of motor racing. Well, we might not host the finale now, but Mexico hosts a party nonetheless. So welcome to the Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez for the Mexico City Grand Prix. At 2,285 meters above sea level, the thin air of the Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez poses a unique challenge, not just to a driver's skill, but to the efficiency of their engines as well. 17 corners then make a lap of this 2.6 mile circuit, expect incredible speeds in excess of 220 miles per hour, and overtaking into the braking zones of turn one and turn four. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks like for today's race. Lando Norris will lead us away from pole position, and Max Verstappen lines up alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Russell, Fernando Alonso, Sainz, Oscar Piastri, Gasly, Ocon, Leclerc, Perez, Golden Boy, Bottas, Magnussen, Albon, Stroll, Sonoda, Sargent, De Vries, Joe, 
and Lewis Hamilton rounds off the grid. With preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box, and it's fantastic to have you with us here, but I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, I imagine they'll be starting to feel the adrenaline as they anticipate the rundown into Turn 1, a bit like preparing to go into battle. The unknown situation will bring nerves, but that's a good thing. It will keep them focused on the moment and on their surroundings as we build towards the start of the Grand Prix. All right, then we're ready to go racing here in Mexico, a track where I've had a lot of success at in the past. We'll be doing the usual medium to hard compound tire strategy as we get ready to roll off the grid. The formation lap gets underway then, and it's going to be interesting today to see how the dry conditions can affect the lifespan of the tires. So as all the cars take their positions on the grid, the teams will be hoping their strategies pay off for them in today's race. The question I'm asking is which teams have got it right, which ones have got it horribly wrong. All right, guys, uh, everybody just hope for the best here today. Hopefully uh, the engine hangs on another grid penalty, but obviously it just it is what it is. So let's just get it uh, to the finish today. I agree, mate. Hoping for the best today. Hoping for the best today. That's really all we can do as we get ready to roll here from Mexico. So we, of course, take a grid penalty because we had to change another part due to the mechanical failure in the last episode. Uh, we had a mechanical failure in the Qatar Sprint and the Qatar Grand Prix, the Coda Sprint and the Coda Grand Prix. It is going to be an interesting one to see if we can finish here today. P11 on the grid. We're ready to go racing here. Now it's lights out. Lando Norris, Max Verstappen, your front row as we head down this long straightaway towards turn one. We got a lot of time to make some ground up. You see me on the left side of the track. They're making some ground up already. Verstappen takes the lead. It's been a terrible season for the three-time back-to-back world champ. Alonso is going to make a three wide for the lead around the outside. He backs out of it. Thinks better of it. Norris sends it. You see exactly where his priorities are. Verstappen and his teammate of Perez both on the softs, but surprise it was Norris able to get the best of them uh, as they head through now down this next straightaway towards and that left-hander the 90 degree left-hander that is and you can see everybody now settling in I'm right behind uh, George Russell at this point now as I was looking for maybe to make an aggressive move watch me right there I'm gonna send one up the inside right there you can see it that'll be a move on the inside of Russell knowing the situation at hand we're not fighting for the world championship but I see an opportunity today to help my teammate of Fernando Alonso quite significantly to get some po uh, extra points on both Russell and, of course, Lewis Hamilton, who starts all the way at the back of the grid. I am going to fight Russell Hamilton a lot harder for the remainder of the season uh, than we have, uh, you know, leading up to this point. That's for sure here. Lap two uh, underway right behind Pierre Gasly, who continues to just really go on a tear recently. He had such a difficult start uh, at the Alpine last season in the career mode, but he has really come into his own with this team and really seems to be gelling now as I have a bit of oversteer, and that would actually make myself uh, very... Very vulnerable down the end of the straightaway for George Russell to make this move up the inside. So unfortunately, Russell up to P7 as we drop down to P8. But we were coming up on this big battle battle right here. You got Verstappen, Perez, I myself going around the outside of Russell. And a big run on the Alpine of Gasly. We're going to send one up the inside of the Frenchman. And just like that, thank you very much. A two for one special and aggressive move. But it moves us up into sixth place now. As we now try to set our sights on the Spaniard of Carlos Sainz at the Ferrari of course now as you can see he's making a move right here on the inside of Verstappen who started P2 went briefly to P1 in the run towards turn one but now he's down to fifth and he's about to be under pressure from myself here as well you can see that Red Bull even on the soft compound tire either the softs are not working or the Red Bull is not working not quite sure which one it is but Perez has gotten past Verstappen and is currently up in third so I'm thinking it's a Verstappen issue right now nonetheless we complete the pass on the Dutchman and move up into fifth place his future at Red Bull still unclear. We will definitely know it within the coming episodes before the end of the season as we are now up into this battle with Perez and Sainz. Perez going backwards now goes a bit defensive on myself. I'm going to go to the right side. Contact there as we go into the side of him in his home Grand Prix. I, that was a bit of an aggressive move on myself. It was pretty late into the corner that I went to the outside there uh, into the braking zone but we both escaped without any damage. Just a small collision. We move through into fourth place. Sainz third. Alonso second. Norris leading and long gone down the road. Where has this pace come from? McLaren has continued to improve 
throughout this whole career mode compared to everybody else. And now here they are, of course, uh, leading after winning. And Koda as I run into the back of Science. He has a lock up into turn one. We get very lucky. No wing damage. And now he is very vulnerable to myself. We are right on the back of him. DRS open. No DRS for Science. We're going to swing to the right side of the track. This should be an easy overtake. We blow past him. He fights back up the inside, but he's not going to have enough right there. Yes, we will get clear into that third uh, position now. Just really hoping that the engine doesn't fail here. Do we have enough pace? For Alonso, do we have enough pace to pull away from signs? Because if they're in my DRS, uh, it's going to be very difficult down this front straightaway to be able to hold on. And, and that would certainly uh, become very evident here. Watch this down towards turn one. Look at the speed, the closing rate. You can't really defend against that. You just hope for the best, and, and just now it's going to kind of go into this back and forth kind of deal. Now, yellow flag out behind us on lap 12, and it looks like it, it's definitely Max Verstappen. Max Verstappen here in Mexico, day over, the engine fails, the frustrating season continues for him. We continue on, no safety car, lap 15, still behind Carlos Sainz, getting very close to the pit window now, uh, struggling actually to maintain with them. I was really starting to fall off, but we would stay right with them eventually, lap 16. And you can see a big opportunity again to go for another overtake here uh, on Carlos. You can see on the track map some drivers into the pits, about four drivers actually. Those are the guys on the softs that are mainly coming in. We get the pass done on signs and now it's like, okay, should we consider pitting at this point? Because we are definitely struggling. Lab 17, this is Esteban Ocon and the Alpine pulling over. And that's the second mechanical failure in just the last few laps now. And as we started that 17th lap actually, this was Carlos Sainz uh, breezing back past me again. So it's very difficult to just stay ahead. Head. The end of the lap, though, it was time to come into the pits here. Now, this is a lap earlier than the pit window. So, the pit window opens lap 18. I decided we're going to come in now. I was starting to struggle a little bit. So, we're going to come in, uh, take these mediums off that are quite worn down, and we're going to put on that fresh set of hard tires here now. And it's going to be a solid pit stump overall. It's been quite some time since we've had a pit error. Let's hope it continues like that for the rest of the season. 2.2 seconds on the board. We are back rolling nonetheless here here on lap 18. We exit uh, right here actually with Perez. So we're going to be P9 just in front of Yuki Tsunoda uh, as we got some work to do of course and hopefully we can put these hard compound tires to work and build a nice gap to Carlos Sainz by the time uh, he elects to come into the pit lane. That's really the goal here to hopefully break the DRS on him. The leader Lando Norris now coming into the pits. He'll put on a fresh set of hards as well and there's no stopping Lando Norris today. He's going on a tear. He got that first win in his career last episode episode looking for a second here today now back to back what a way to start off your winning ways in formula one it would be now as you can see norris way up the road he's on hards perez is on medium so perez is going to have more pace than any of us here uh probably for the next 10 laps or so i would say so it's going to be very hard to stick with him and that would prove to be he was nearly two seconds up the road by the time alonso made his pit stop he comes out behind perez only 1.1 seconds up the road from me of course because he did a few extra laps but concerns start to set in I was losing time to Alonzo, 1.5, 1.6 seconds. I was struggling to close in uh, because, well, I couldn't close in at all uh, to my teammate of uh, Fernando. And you can see the gap was now over two seconds. He also had DRS from Perez pulling him closer uh, to the back of that Red Bull who's trying to get a podium here in his home Grand Prix. So it was looking pretty unlikely that I was suddenly going to have a chance to fight with these guys. Now three and a half seconds to these guys who were battling in front of us on lap 26. Now as we're going to go through the grid in these closing 10 laps in the Mexico Grand Prix. Lando Norris in total control of this one again here today. It appears nothing can stop him here in Mexico. He really is finally coming into the winning form. We all knew he had Crofty. Here's Perez setting up for Fernando into turn one. He doesn't want to give this one up, does he? Well, it looks like he's just going to chill behind Alonso here. But as I say that, looks like Alonso may have missed the apex and now they are side by side through the, through the chicane. Look at that speed though, Crofty. Alonso will remain ahead and that also allowed Owen to, to close in a bit. So Alonso maintains third over Perez. Owen trails them in fourth. Uh, what a drive again from, uh, uh, from Pierre Gasly who runs uh, in fifth currently. Yeah, exactly. a great drive again from Pierre. We can touch on a few others like how about Lance Stroll putting the worst car on the and, and the grid in 13th today. Lewis is struggling hard in traffic and is only up to 15th so far. This will be a great chance for both Alonso and Russell to insert themselves back into the title hunt here today. 
Well, there you have through the grid. There you see Lewis Hamilton struggling for track position. Of course, started uh, bad in, or had a bad qualifying effort, then took a grid penalty and is only up to 15th, 27 laps into this Grand Prix. Still a bit of time for him to move forward. We'll see what he can do uh, as we continue on our own race here. Lap 30 now, still running fourth place, a second between myself and Perez desperately trying to close this gap to the back of the home Grand Prix driver, but it really wasn't happening now. Look at the gap here. Lap 31 still hovering above that one second mark. I couldn't quite break into the uh, DRS threshold. It just I couldn't quite get there. So you can see now 1.2, 1.3 seconds, and it just continues to grow. These hard tires never clicked, and then I actually get my third warning of the day, a three-second time penalty, so that basically puts it all uh, to an end for us here now to come through to the final lap of the Grand Prix, we actually are going to make it a whole Grand Prix without an engine failure. Can you believe it? It's a nice change of scenery and hopefully a consistent change of scenery. Lando Norris, back-to-back -back wins his second win in Formula 1 here in Mexico. Alonso on the podium with Perez as well. We round the final corner, even with the three-second time penalty. We're 10 seconds ahead of signs. It'll be P4 uh, finally finishing a Grand Prix again. We will take it here in the Mexican Grand Prix. Pretty happy with that. Setting ourselves up nicely uh, for the remaining uh, Grand Prix here now. Uh, as you can see, Perez, driver of the day. Let's head to the podium. What a fantastic Grand Prix that was and an excellent win for McLaren. Anthony Davidson, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Well, they certainly stood out as a driver with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalise on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. Well, we'll see the podium celebration there as Lando Norris is going to walk out at the top step now. Uh, we hopefully can see uh, Oscar Piastri improve his pace here, uh, going into, I would say, especially next season there as it will be his third season in Formula 1 and, and now McLaren is, is obviously proving that they have a car capable of winning. Imagine if they had that car you know early in the season they could have really joined this title fight uh, but I really do think we have gotten, gotten confirmation that there is no regulation changes coming into next season. So I think we're in for a really interesting uh, season three of this career mode as these teams continue to get closer uh, up towards the top with Aston Martin, uh, Mercedes, McLaren, maybe Red Bull. Uh, we'll have to wait and see on that. Uh, but you see the finishing order. You'll see the point standings as well. Hamilton 27 ahead of Alonso, 47 ahead of George Russell. And well, Mercedes has already locked up the Constructors' Championship. Just a few Grand Prix remain. Hamilton tries to lock up the title. It's going to get interesting in the coming episodes. I'll see you guys next time. Have a great day, everybody.